Good morning and welcome to Evangel Church Online. Let's dive right into the Word of God this morning. I'll be reading 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing that was hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And then he said, and then she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report I heard. Happy are your men, happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king, that you may execute justice and righteousness. In verse 13, And King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked, besides what was given to her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her land with her servants. I don't know about you, but I love a good road trip. Now that might just be because I don't drive, and I have short legs, but I love, love, love road trips. I have a question. What are some places that for you are worth the drive? Like you'd be willing to drive a long way, a great distance to get to this place. We all have something, some place or someone that we would be willing to travel a great distance to get to. Whether it's a vacation spot, a good restaurant, maybe a sports team you love, a sick family member or friend, or a child that lives far away. Well, in 1 Kings chapter 10, the Queen of Sheba goes on a road trip. Now she must have felt like this trip was worth it because she traveled a great distance and she went to great lengths to get to Jerusalem. She had heard of Solomon, his wisdom, and all that God was doing, and she herself wanted to go and see it with her own eyes. Now we're not exactly sure where Sheba was located. There's much debate. Many commentators suggest that Sheba was located at the southern end of the Arabian Peninsula along the Red Sea in what would be modern day Yemen. And others believe that Sheba was located in what is now called Ethiopia. But regardless of the exact location, it would have been at least a 2,000 kilometer trip to get to Jerusalem. Can you imagine in those days, no cars, no technology, no road trip playlists, <laughs> you're traveling by camel. One estimate is that the caravan that's described here in this text could have traveled about 30 kilometers a day, which means it would have taken about 75 days to make this trip one way. And remember, this is a queen. This is a wealthy queen. She's, a, she's from a prosperous nation. She did not have to make this trip. In fact, it wasn't the norm for a queen to go on a trip like this. But she said, I must go myself. She was personally invested. She thought the trip was going to be worth it. So what motivated the Queen of Sheba to make this long trek to Jerusalem to meet Solomon? Well, verse 1 says, Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with questions. So she heard about his fame. She heard about his wealth and his wisdom. She wanted to see if all the things that she had heard about him were true. Now, whatever the reason she may have had, there's one thing that really stuck out to me here. Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame concerning the name of the Lord, another translation said she had heard about his relationship with the Lord. So the Queen of Sheba heard about Solomon and his God, and she said, I must know more about that. That's why she went. That's why she made the trek. And guess what? God's blessings aren't just for you. 
You see, I believe that God's blessings in your life will draw others to him. When you're walking in obedience to God and when God's blessings are flowing in your life, people will notice. When you're living for God and you're serving God, others will be attracted to you. Why? Because people are hungry. Because people are far from God and they're searching. They're searching. The Queen of Sheba was far away, far from God, not just geographically, but spiritually. She was from a pagan nation. She was searching for something. She wouldn't have gone to such great lengths to visit Jerusalem otherwise. She heard about King Solomon and his God, and she was drawn to it. Church, people will be drawn to you. People will be drawn to God's blessings in your life. They'll want to see for themselves. They'll want to spend time in your home. They'll want to go for coffee with you. They'll want to be part of your Bible study or prayer group. They'll want to see what God is doing in your life with their own eyes. People will come because people are hungry and people are searching and people are coming. I'm not just talking about people coming to church. I'm talking about people coming to you. And it might not be the people that you'd expect. Sometimes we get so focused on saving our close family and our friends that we forget that we're surrounded by people every day who are far from God in our schools, in our workplaces, on the bus, at the grocery store. We need to be a church and we need to be believers who have a heart for those that are far from God. For those who are searching that they too would come to know Jesus. Is that something you care about? Do you notice the people around you that are far from God? Are you hungry for people to experience his love? Are you praying that Holy Spirit would put people in your path who you can share Jesus with? People will come, but are we ready to receive them? That's point number one. People will come, but are we ready to receive them? And verse 2 says, And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. I've been thinking about this passage a lot this week. I've been thinking about this encounter and trying to put myself in the shoes of Queen Sh Queen, uh, Queen, the Queen of Sheba. She travels this long distance to meet this king for the first time. And it sounds like right away she tells him everything that's on her mind. Maybe it was the thing she's never told anyone. Maybe it was some things that she was really wrestling with. But she must have felt welcomed. She must have felt warmly received by him. And as I thought about this, I was like, wow, I sure hope that when people come to Evangel Church, we're ready to receive them. I pray that when people come to me personally, I am ready to receive them. People will come, but are we ready? Are we ready to receive them? So the Queen of Sheba came not just to tell Solomon all that was on her mind, but to also ask him questions, hard questions, the Bible says. She brought her questions with her. As we think about our relationship with God, we all have questions that we want answers to. Do you have some hard questions? Maybe you're looking for direction or guidance for a tough decision that you're making. You know, what's God's will? What am I supposed to do next? Maybe you're asking and wondering, how do I deal with pain and with loss? How do I find peace? How do I deal with sin and temptation? Think about the questions that you have. Where do you go for answers? Is it the internet? Is it a person? Is it your education? Is it your experience? In verse 3, we, seen that, we see that the queen's questions were no match for Solomon. He had the wisdom he needed to answer her hard questions. Where did Solomon get that wisdom? Did he get it from the internet, from Google? <laughs> hey, Google. Was it a self-help book? No, it was from God. He asked God for wisdom and God gave it to him. And church, we too have access to the wisdom of God. We too can ask God for wisdom and then trust that he will give it to us. All throughout scripture, over and over, it says, for those who ask for wisdom, I will give it. The church holds the answers to life's greatest questions. We do. We have the answers. Our society seems to turn everywhere else. We want people and things to give us the answer, to tell us what to do, to tell us how to think and what to believe. But as believers, we don't turn to people or things for the answers. We turn to Almighty God. Now, you might be sitting there. You might be wondering, thinking, I don't know the answers to my own questions, <laughs> much less other people's. 
And I'm with you. People might ask some tough questions and sometimes you won't have the answers and that's okay. There have been times when people have come to me and said, pastor, and they've asked these tough questions. And I've had to say, honestly, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know what I'd do in that situation, but I know someone who does. I know that Jesus knows the answer to that question and he will show you what to do. He has the wisdom you need for that situation. We don't have to have all the answers, but we do need to be able to share Jesus. First Peter 3.15 says, but make sure that in your hearts, you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it, but do it gently and with respect. God has given the church the mission to share his truth with the world. We have a mission. We have an assignment. People will come and people will ask questions. And are you ready? Are we ready to give an answer for the hope that we have in Jesus? Are we ready to share Jesus with others? Are you ready to share the truth? So she came, she asked her questions, and now in verse four and five, she looks around and she carefully observes everything around her. She's noticing everything. She's taking it all in. She's seeing the magnificent royal palace that's been built with such artistry. She's seeing the food on the table, the palace staff, their attitude, how well they're trained and equipped, the banquets they're preparing, and even the clothing, right down to the clothing they're wearing. She's seeing the burnt offerings that Solomon offered at the temple that he built for the Lord. And don't forget, she's a queen, so she's no stranger to wealth and abundance. She's no stranger to religion. But what she witnessed firsthand in Jerusalem, verse 5 says, took her breath away. When she saw what God was doing through Solomon, her breath was taken away. It left her speechless, awestruck, overwhelmed. She was amazed. Verse six, and she said to the king, the report was true. The report was true. I didn't believe the reports until I came and my own eyes saw it. So 2000 kilometers away in the kingdom of Sheba, this queen heard reports about Solomon and his fame. And initially she was skeptical. These reports, they seemed too good to be true. And so she determined to go and check it out for herself. And she discovers that what she heard about Solomon was true. It was true before she even believed it. It was true, but she didn't fully believe it until she experienced it firsthand with her own eyes. And then in verse eight, she says, happy are your men. She had been watching, she had been observing them. She saw that they were happy to be serving their king. I don't know about you, but I want people to look at me and my life the way that the queen looked at Solomon and his people. I want them to know that there is joy in knowing and serving God. Whatever your calling is to serve Jesus, do you want your children? Do you want your spouse? Do you want the people in your home, the people in your workplace, the people in your community to know that there is joy in serving God? When we're joyfully serving Jesus, others see that and it makes them think well of him. So the queen of Sheba, she, she observed all this and everything she observed in Jerusalem pointed her to the God Israel. In verse 9, she's talking about his God, Solomon's God. There's no evidence in this passage that she was converted to faith in the one true God. But we do know that she became convinced that the God of Israel existed. And she credited him with Solomon's wisdom and success. She realized that what she experienced there in Jerusalem was evidence of God, of a God who loved and delighted in his people. Everything that she experienced pointed her to the God of Israel. One author said it this way, I love this quote, the Queen of Sheba came to see Solomon's glory and in the process she encountered the glory of Solomon's God. God's blessings in our lives should always point people to our extraordinary God, not to ourselves, not to us, but to our God. So when people come to you, which they will because God's blessings in your life will draw them to you, are you ready? Will you be ready to point them to Jesus? When they come to see your skills and your talents, to see what you can do, to see how you serve your spouse, to see how you raise your kids, to see how you handle your finances, will you point them to Jesus? 
They may want to see your wisdom and your knowledge and your glory initially, but in the process, let your prayer be that they will encounter the glory of your God. As I conclude, the end of verse 13 says she returned home. When she got home, I'm sure that she shared with her people what she had seen, what she had heard, what she had experienced. You see, this was not just about spreading the fame of Solomon. This was about spreading the glory of Solomon's God beyond Israel to the entire world. That's always been God's plan. God draws this queen from the kingdom of Sheba all the way to Jerusalem, and then he sends her back to spread the fame and the glory of Solomon's God. And God draws you, and God shows you his glory, and then God sends you home. He sends you home to your workplace, to your neighborhood, to your community to share the glory of your great God. When people are drawn to us because of God's blessings in our lives, what do we do with that? What do we do? Are we ready to receive them? Are we ready to share the truth with them? Are we ready to point them to Jesus? Do we take credit for all the blessings in our lives or do we give God the glory he deserves? Do we let God's blessings in our lives be a testimony to others? There are people who are far from God, people who are hungry, people who are searching, people who are coming, people who will ask questions, people who will watch and observe very closely, people just like the Queen of Sheba. And guess what? You're Solomon. I'm Solomon, and we have the incredible privilege of showing those in our sphere of influence the glory of our God. The question is, will we? Are we ready? Are you ready today?